all of you have must seen uh, few voltage or current sources in different electronics and electrical circuits. These sources are nothing but a means to convert chemical, thermal or mechanical energy into electric energies. Today we are going to learn more about these sources and various types of voltage sources. So basically sources are of two kinds, voltage source and current source. We use voltage sources more often uh, than current sources, but uh, there are few circuits where uh, analyzing the circuit using current source is much easier. And as you can see, uh, both voltage and current sources can be either ideal or practical. Now, we don't see any ideal voltage or ideal current sources anywhere. But uh, to analyze or to understand basic concepts of circuit, we need to understand the voltage or current sources as ideal sources. And when we are going to use these sources in real life, we have to consider them as practical sources. That's mean practical voltage source or practical current source. Some of you have must seen this symbol. This is basically a symbol of a single cell. Cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. The long end denotes the positive terminal of the cell and the short end denotes the negative terminal of the cell. And we can combine this type of cell in series or parallel combinations and then they are called batteries. And obviously this is positive and this is negative terminal. Uh, in high studies you may not see uh, the voltage source as these parallel lines but may have seen the voltage sources like this. This is also a symbol of voltage source and it specifically denotes the positive and negative terminal of the source. You already know that uh, cell or batteries are an example of voltage sources. There are other voltage sources also like a photovoltaic cell, thermocouple, etc. If the voltage source is ideal, then there are few particular characteristics assigned to this ideal voltage sources. So this is a symbol of ideal voltage sources and uh, first characteristics is that the internal resistance I am denoting it by R internal resistance of a voltage source is zero. Second characteristic is that you can draw any amount of output current. Okay and the third point is the output voltage of a ideal voltage source remains constant with respect to maybe current or time or load resistance whatever. So first of all you can see there is no resistance connected in series or parallel whatsoever with this ideal voltage sources and the voltage at these two terminal is exactly equal to the voltage at these two terminals even if I connect a load through these two terminals. So maybe there is a uh, load resistance RL. Uh, you may ask what is the difference between normal resistance and load resistance. You see any resistance can be load resistance. But the load resistance is the specific resistance across which we are interested to see the energy dissipation. You see voltage source is an active element. That means it doesn't uh, waste energy or dissipates energy. But load is a resistance that is passive element which dissipates energy correct so now you can see in this graph if i plot the output voltage or voltage of the um, voltage source whatever with respect to current or time or even load resistance so whatever may be the x axis the output voltage remains constant okay but in case of practical voltage, these three points are going to differ. So first of all, you can see in case of practical voltage source, there is a small resistance connected in series with the ideal voltage source. So the internal resistance here is not zero. There will be some value, maybe in order of milli ohms to um, tens of ohms. Okay, in practical uh, cases, I have seen maybe. Uh, 2 ohms, 3 ohms for a small cell or in a big cell maybe around 10 ohms or so. And second, you 
cannot draw any amount of current that you wish. There is a current rating given by the manufacturer which shows the suitable range of current that can be drawn from that voltage source. And also the output voltage of the voltage source is not constant. It may change with respect to the load resistance or the with respect to the amount of current that you are drawing. If it is not a uh, rechargeable one, so it may also lose its voltage with respect to time. Like uh, practical days, uh, AAA or uh, AA batteries, if you keep these batteries uh, long time without using them, the output voltage will significantly drop. So if I plot a graph, output voltage with respect to output current or output load resistance or even time the voltage is going to decline like so so why this happens let's us examine this very carefully you see suppose this is the supply voltage i am denoting it by vs this is the internal resistance of the cell okay now i am connecting an output load resistance denoted by rl now imagine there is i current passing through this circuit so the current should originate at the positive terminal of the cell passes through uh, the small internal resistance of the cell and then it passes through the load resistance and comes back at the negative terminal of the cell so the circuit is completed now let us denote this current by i we all know ohm's law where output voltage or any voltage is denoted by I current into resistance R. Okay. So the output voltage here, if I measure this voltage right here using voltmeter, then this voltage would be called the output voltage. You may denote it by VO or someone, uh, if you wish, you can denote it by VL. VL means voltage across the load, whatever you want. So let us write it as VO. Okay you may use VL. So if this was an ideal voltage source then the output voltage should have been equal to the supply voltage. But now we know that it is not an ideal voltage source there is a small internal resistance. So there must be a voltage drop here. Then what is the amount of voltage drop along across this resistance? By using Ohm's law, we can simply find out that the voltage drop is equal to current into the resistance. So this amount voltage is being dropped here. So output voltage should be equal to supply voltage minus the voltage drop. This is the first way to find out the output voltage. So now calculate the uh, current, which is very simple. Current is equal to total supply voltage divided by total resistance which means internal resistance plus load resistance of the circuit okay if the current passes through them like this so these two resistance acts in series combination now put this value in this equation what we will find you find that output voltage is equal to vs minus vs divided by r plus rl into r we can simplify this equation like so mm. and so we find out that output voltage is nothing but Vs into RL divided by R plus RL. So either you can use this equation or you can use simply this equation. Okay, this is one way to calculate the output voltage. There is a simple way also to calculate this. You see, the output voltage should also be equal to the current into the resistance, output resistance, right? So, I know that value of current is this. So, I can easily find out the output voltage is equal to current, which is Vs by R plus RL into output resistance or load resistance. So these two equations are actually the same. The main objective uh, here is to learn that if 
we are using an practical voltage sources in most of the case we are using that then the output voltage is not simply the input voltage there must be a voltage drop which exactly equal to the voltage drop across the internal resistance of the cell you may ask where this internal resistance comes from it depends on the cell or the power supply if it is an electrochemical cell then there is an internal resistance due to electrolyte resistance and the resistance between electrode and electrolytes so that may depend but the fact is if there is an internal resistance then there must be a voltage drop and output voltage will be less than the input voltage we may take an example to understand this better let us assume the supply voltage is of 20 volt this is very common supply voltage uh, if you are using a fixed voltage source dc source in your lab then the um, value may be 20, uh, 12 volt or 20 volt uh, and if you are using a variable voltage source uh, then the maximum value may uh, be 20 volt uh, let us also assume the internal resistance to be 20 ohm now this information is given now we are connecting an external load resistance here and the value of uh, this load resistance uh, let's say 180 ohm now if it was an ideal voltage source then the output voltage should have been 20 volt but now there will be a voltage drop across the internal resistance which is equal to current into amount of internal resistance right and what is the current current is equal to total supplied voltage divided by total resistance okay then 20 divided by 200 and this should be equal to 0 0.1 ampere put this value in this equation this will give me the value 20 minus 2 volt okay simply 18 volt so you can see a very small volt uh, a very small amount of resistance around 20 ohm gives me drop of around 2 volt so although the supply voltage is 20 volt but i am getting only 18 volt at the output so you must uh, have realized the difference between ideal and practical voltage source right the first difference is obviously the output voltage for ideal voltage source remains constant but in case of practical voltage source the voltage is not constant i can draw any amount of current right from zero to infinite but here the current is fixed or rather say there is a range for suitable current and the most important point is the internal resistance of ideal voltage source is zero but in case of practical voltage source the internal resistance ranges between few milli ohms to tens of ohms right tens or 20 ohms so in next class we will learn about the difference between ideal and practical current sources and then we will learn how we can transform or convert a voltage source into a current source or a current source into voltage source so stay tuned for our next video and thank you for watching